Welcome back guys. Hopefully you have a good understanding of what we've covered so far. Today we're going to talk about the string data type, an if statement, a while loop, and a for loop. Let's get started. First thing that I need to tell you about is the data type called string. Um, so string, like we said before, string is whatever's in quotation marks. Well you can say like string is the data type and then let's say string name equals uh, quotations tj in quotation semicolon. Now uh, let's display the message here saying see out name. Now you'll notice here that this has a red squiggly line underneath it basically saying that this isn't going to work. Um, string has something real particular to it to where you actually have to uh, include string for this to work. So string is basically a data type and you can create variables that have a name with it. So this variable name is, uh, uh, well the variable name is name. <laughs> it's of string data type and it equals TJ. So whenever I say C out name, since I have include string up here, this will now work and now it'll say TJ. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna look at is an if statement. What is an if statement? An if statement is, if a condition is met, execute a line of code. So, how do we make an if statement? First, let's declare a variable. We're going to say that int number equals 7. So, the program knows that there is a number that equals 7. Now, to create an if statement, let's say like, if, parentheses, number equals seven perform perform an action now um, one thing I do need to tell you is that when working with if statements you can't just say equals you actually have to put a second equals in there in an if statement you have to use double equals because a single equals is in like an assignment that's what how the computer takes it but when you're using it in a condition you actually have to use two equals uh, so this is basically what an if statement will look like well if parentheses the condition and if it's met underneath it you're going to put curly braces and it's going to execute what's in these curly braces so if the number equals se uh, seven we're going to see out it worked now one thing that's really important with the if statement is there's uh, another statement called else and basically else is only used if there's an if statement so if if doesn't go through else will work so if the number equals seven see how it worked else so if the number doesn't equal seven put curly braces here and we're gonna say if else if the number isn't seven uh, see out no bueno okay so kind of as a recap what we have so far is on line seven, we say that we have a number. It's an int and it equals seven. And on line 11, we're saying if, parentheses, number equals equals seven, uh, parentheses, execute this line of code. So if it's seven, execute, it worked. Else, uh, which is paired with if, uh, curly braces, C out, no bueno. So when we go to local Windows de a debugger, it says it worked, great, because we're saying here that numbers equal seven. Now, what if number doesn't equal seven? Let's say if number, number equals eight, and we go to run it. Since number uh, equals eight, whenever it gets to line 11 where it says if number equals equals seven, since it doesn't, it's not gonna even recognize lines 12, 13, and 14. And since else is uh, paired with if, if if, doesn't, if, <laughs> if if doesn't go through, then else is going to go through. So basically, when we run this, it'll say no bueno. And that is because an if statement has a, uh, has a parentheses and then a condition. And if that condition does not met, if there's an else, then it, uh, it'll uh, compile what is in, you know, line 18. Because we put these curly braces here saying whatever is in these curly braces execute is if, if, if doesn't work. So the next thing we're gonna look at is a while loop. A while loop, what it'll look like is first you declare your variable, then you write the word while in parentheses the condition. 
Then underneath it, you put in a curly brace, and whatever the condition is, if it meets it, it's going to execute that uh, condition. So what does that look like? Well, first we're going to declare a variable. We're going to say int number equals zero. So up here, we're declaring our variable. Now, we're going to say a while, parentheses, number is less than or equal to 15. So do you see what I did there? First thing is you don't add a semicolon at the end of this, kind of like an if statement. You don't add a semicolon at the uh, at the end of the line of the condition. Uh, next thing is I did uh, if the number, uh, or I should say while the number is less than or equal to, and I put those two characters together and accepts that. So it understands this as if uh, while the number is less than or equal to 15, perform a function. Uh, so basically you put the curly braces and what happens in the middle of the curly brace will uh, basically is the code that's going to be executed so we're going to say c out number and then inline now what's going to happen here is that this is going to loop until the number is 15 and it's going to display the number until it reaches 15 so if i go to local window debugger oh it just says zero why is it doing that? Less than. Oh, I see what I'm doing wrong. Okay, so what you have to do is where here in the code am I saying that the number uh, is getting uh, added is something adding up to 15? Um, this is a new keyword is variable plus plus. What I mean by that is you type in what your variable is. So I'm typing in number and then you put plus plus. What this will do is this will add uh, whatever variable it is and it'll add a one to it. So now when we run it, when it loops, when it goes down to number in line, it's gonna say number plus one. And then that's how it's gonna loop. It's gonna continue going from zero to one to one to two, two to three. So now when we go to a local windows debugger, now it's working. It goes all the way from zero down to 15 and then exits the loop. Now the next thing we're gonna look at is a for loop. Now one thing I wanna kinda of point out to you is um, in a for loop, you cannot use the variable that you're declaring in a for loop outside of it. So here in this while loop, we're able to, let's say outside this while loop, we're able to say like see out number plus plus. And what that'll equal out to is 16 because in this while loop, this is gonna loop until it reaches 15 and then exit the loop. But that value of number is being carried out. Now we're able to say a C out number plus one. And if it's already 15, that means it's gonna display 16, which it did. Now on a for loop, how a for loop is constructed, constructed is you, you say for parentheses, declare your variable, semicolon, declare the condition semicolon and then uh, the variable plus plus. What does that look like? First we change while to four and we're also gonna say int number equals zero semicolon. So we basically wrote down what we had up here. We're gonna erase that. And now instead of having number plus plus right here, we're gonna take that out and plug it in right here. Number plus plus. Now one thing uh, that I said before and I just want to recap it is whenever you're using a for loop in particular, um, whenever you declare a variable, so I'm declaring number in uh, this for loop, uh, notice that number outside the for loop has a squiggly find. It says identifier number is undefined, but I'm defining it in the for loop. Uh, why is it not working? Because whenever you declare something in a for loop, it cannot be used outside of the for loop. Um, it's, it, it just doesn't carry out uh, the value of what you're doing in the for loop outside the for loop. So we actually have to take this out. Uh, so this should have the same result. We go to local windows debugger and boom, zero to 15. If you've been following along on these video tutorials and typing in the code on your computer, then you are almost a programmer. If you got this far, then awesome. 
this homework assignment is going to be a real milestone in your learning and there's a tool that you're going to need to use in order to complete this homework assignment. It's called pseudocode. So what is pseudocode? Pseudocode is basically you writing down on a piece of paper or typing it up on a Word document what you want your program to do in English so that way when you go to code it, when you go to program it, you'll have an overview of what you need to make sure the program does for it to work correctly. Um, I want to give you the homework assignment in pseudocode and it may be very difficult. Feel free to rewatch the videos or uh, search uh, Google or YouTube, you know, utilize other resources to try to figure this code out. I believe that I've given you enough information to really do this homework assignment. But like I said, if you can finish this homework assignment, it'll be a real milestone in your learning. This is going to be your homework assignment. This is pseudocode, and before diving into it, I just want to make sure that before you start this, you need to understand how to make a basic program. Like, you need to know how to basically do, like, include iostream using namespace std, int main, curly brace, return zero, uh, in curly brace. Like, you need to know how to make a basic program. If you don't know, go back and rewatch some of the uh, first few video tutorials that step you through how to do that. Okay, so pseudocode. What I want to have you do is First create a string called name and assign the value of name as your name. Basically that's going to look like something like string name equals quotations tj quotations. Um, and then underneath that create an int called age and assign the value of age as zero. So you're going to say something like int age equals zero. Under that you're also going to put uh, you're going to create another int called years until 50 and assign the value to zero. So you're going to write something like int years until 50 equals zero. And then under your int main, you're going to create an if statement. Uh, create an if, an if statement that says if the condition of name's value is your name, perform an action. That may sound a little confusing, but basically what you're going to do is you're going to say something like if parentheses name equals quotations tj quotations then perform an action uh, so under that if statement you're going to have some curly braces and you're going to assign the value of age your current age so for me uh, it's going to say uh, curly brace age equals 26 because I'm 26 um, and then close curly brace then uh, under that you're going to create a while loop create a while loop stating while age is less than 50 perform an action so it's going to look like something like while parentheses age is less than 50 uh, close parentheses under that you're going to put some curly braces and then you're going to add one to the value of age so what that's going to look like is like age plus one or hint age plus plus uh, under that you're also going to put in those curly braces uh, add one to the value of years until 50 so that's going to say something like years until 50 plus plus um, and then close curly brace. Now, after that, after your if and your while, you're going to have uh, your program display a message. It's going to say uh, a message saying you have number of years until you're 50 years old. What that's going to look like is C out operator quotations you have space quotations and then plug in another operator. Then after that operator, uh, type in the, uh, the variable years until 50 uh, and then another operator then quotations years until you're 50 years old so this is pseudocode and I kind of told you how to program it uh, all you have to do is just take what I said put it on your computer and make it work um, this may be a little bit challenging I believe I've given you all the tools that you need to complete this, especially me stepping you through what to, <laughs> what to type uh, throughout each uh, pseudocode. But this is going to be a real milestone. Once you're able to do this, uh, you know, it's going to be awesome. In the next video tutorial, we're going to be looking at switch statements. We're going to be looking at functions and how to separate functions into different CPP files. And we're also going to be looking at enumerations. So the next video tutorial will be a little bit of a doozy, but what I would recommend doing is make sure that you're able to complete this homework assignment and practice programming. Try to make it to where you can type a lot of this code on your own because once you're able to do it from memory, it's going to make it a lot easier to learn uh, the more complex things with C++ and programming. Um, I appreciate your patience with everything, and I'll see you next time.